down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. All right, Monday. What up, Savvy Investors? This is your boy, Steve Van Kalmberg, the Savvy Landlord. You tuned in to the Savvy Radio Show. It's Monday. Some people get sad on Mondays. I know that I was driving in Maine and it was rainy and foggy and I was a little like kind of under the weather, like bummed. I'm like, where does this come from? How do people get depressions? Are things getting you down? How about you're a real estate investor and you can't find a deal and you're bummed about it? Another word for being bummed could be depression. Well, here today at the Savvy Radio Show, bing, bing. We're going to crush it. That's right. I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks of myself personally. How do I keep motivated? How do I keep rolling? And my job is to help you deal with depression. I think we all deal with it in some form or fashion. Some people hide it well. Some eat. Oh, I'm a little chubby. Some do extremes to avoid pain. I'm here to share some tips to get you through the Mick and Meyer. Well, if you really do struggle with depression, and honestly, I have no idea where I come up with these subjects, for real. I'm like driving around, and I mean, how is this real estate related? <laughs> I'm like, this is the Savvy Radio Show. And uh, first of all, I want to give mad love to the folks that have been uh, texting me about Failing Forward episode, and another episode, uh, the deal one that I went through, and I just want to give you a heads up. Uh, and thank you for all the folks that have encouraged me. But this is, you know, I don't, you know, I don't like the word depression because when you hear the word depression, people are like, oh, it's negative or you need to be medicated or you need to go see a doctor. And, I, you know, because, you know, my wife works in the medical field. And I remember one time I said, you know, dealing with depression and I can tell that it she twitched like, like you're going to die if you have depression. I think. You can, you can spiral, you can spiral in a positive way, you could spiral in a negative way. And I think through my whole life at 40 something years old, I have mild cases of depression. I don't think they're like, it's a bad thing, a negative thing. I just think that I figured out ways to identify it and crush it. And so here's about 13 of them. I thought of another one uh, yesterday, too, but I'll break it down. Here you go. First of all, the way to stop depression straight out the gate is freaking stop watching TV. TV is straight up dumb, for real. Living in a reality world TV show or uh, HT something, watch Flip This Somebody, you need to be doing your own TV show. You don't need to be watching TV, okay? That's that's the first thing. I, I, I promise you, if you struggle with depression, like you're bummed, like you're not motivated, you don't want to go to work, I guarantee is if I looked at your schedule is that you've been on TV, you watch too many reruns of some show. And every time you sit down on that couch and you're watching TV, where are you going? That's the question you got to ask, but you do fight depression. How do you medicate yourself? A lot of people medicate themselves by laying on a couch, watching TV and being numb. Well, the first thing you need to do is get off the couch. Number two, News sucks. Mm -hmm. Get off your phone, reading the news. I have a friend of mine that has all these bleep, blop, bloop beepers on his phone. Like Donald Trump just killed somebody and he get a text. Okay. Get the notifications off your phone. If it revolves around news, you don't need to know the news. Well, current events, Van Kalenberg. Listen, if it's important enough, the seriously loved ones will tell you. It's not cool. I really don't think it's cool. You're up on the on the tip of knowing all the details. And it's just we're living vicariously through somebody else. We're worrying about someone dying. I, I think we need to know uh, enough. You know, it's sad. There was an earthquake the other day. There was an earthquake in Oklahoma the other day. And it, it breaks my heart. But I, I missed that episode. Like, I, I miss, like, I'm two or three days behind. And uh, I, I know that my life is better that I do not have negative news in my ear, in my eyes, in anything. All right, so how is another way to stop it? Music works. Get juicy. Get up and dance. You deal with depression at all or you're frustrated or you're mad. You can't be mad shaking your tail feather. 
find SoundCloud, Spotify, Amazon Music, the radio. I don't want to say the radio show much because, you know, that tunes in news, that tunes on uh, stupid commercials. But be in an environment that you can control and get some dance music flaring. If you need dance music, you don't know how to pick dance music, you can go to DJSavvy.com. That's your boy. I did a little mix CD. You can download it on uh, SoundCloud for free or you can click on the podcast. It's like 200 or something episode. But music works. Now, you combine number four, running or working out. That works, too, because it gets your mind off of whatever this is bothering you. And it's keeping you focused. Use mu- music and working out works. The wonderful bestseller called The Miracle Morning. The guy dealt with a bunch of depression and how he overcame that was through running. And I recently have become a wannabe runner and running does work. First of all, I think what worked for me is that I lost weight and that weight loss has motivated me to do other things, have a lot better self-esteem about my body and my clothes and what I'm doing. So that's another avenue. If you're overweight and you're struggling, you're depressed, you're doing all this stuff, man, get up off that couch, go run. Number five, set goals. That's a problem with America, man. We, you know, folks from another part of the country, they come over to America and they're, they're balling is because they have a goal. They have a goal of just survival here. You could just get on assistance or scroll, you know, roll of somebody else's couch. You've got to set goals and that in those goals could be as I'm going to do 10 setups a day. That goal could be, I want to buy 20 rental properties. That goal could be, I want to be a real estate investor. I want to be a husband. I want to be married. Whatever the goal is, at least set a goal of something and write it down. I want to make 2000 a month. I want to make 10,000 a month. What are your goals and write them down. That will help you overcome. And then when you start writing those goals down, go big. Like, I want to go to Europe. I want to run a marathon in Hawaii. What are your goals? Write them down, post them up. And that, that may not get you out of some sort of a depression, but it definitely will bring some light in a dark area. Number six, write a letter of encouragement to someone. (laughs) Yes. Do it. If it's a text message, do it. The other day, man, I know a friend of mine is struggling. uh, And just the Lord, whatever, said, hey, text this dude and text him. I'm like, text him what? And I just said, hey, buddy, I'm thinking about you. You're you're in the right position. You're doing it. Go encourage somebody. Write a letter will impact somebody. A text message is okay. Facebook post, yeah, whatever. Facebook message, yeah, you're lazy. But get a freaking piece of paper out, find an envelope somewhere, and write someone an encouraging letter. When you're writing someone, just the aesthetics of your mind, communicating to your hand and what to say is very powerful. Now, if you're an anal detail person and you get worried about spelling and all that jazz, it's probably the person you don't need to be writing, but you need to encourage someone else. I know when I was bummed or depressed or frustrated, man, you just you look to the left, man. Somebody's in a wheelchair. You know, you just hang out at Walmart, man. That, that gets me all like, wow, man, I'm, I'm blessed. You know, you see somebody rolling around a little cart, you know, my my knees jacked up right now. It, it's painful, right? I'm trying to run another half marathon in San Francisco in seven weeks. I'm trying to get there. And I, I tried to run over the weekend on Friday, I think. And man, I'm in f- effing pain. And I realized, man, I'm lucky I can still walk. And so you try to look on the bright side of stuff. Number seven, volunteer. Yep. Volunteer. Commit to something greater than yourself. I know this sounds philosophical. I know where, where, where am I getting it? I, dude, I wrote all this out like free fall. I just started writing. I don't even, they're not, I don't know what order they're in. I just opened up a piece of paper and started writing all this stuff down. But I mean, I'm telling you when I serve, like I serve at whiz kids and it's a uh, not easy to hang out, um, and try to teach somebody to read or encourage them. But I'm telling you the impact that you can make, I forget about myself. Now, trying to go there, yeah, I'm bummed. Oh, I got to go. I, I'm going to miss out. I'm, I'm I'm losing this much time in my life. I'm telling you, when you volunteer and commit to something greater than yourself, you won't be depressed. I promise you. You'll be, you'll be thankful that you're serving. Number eight, <clears throat> 
create a plan and follow it. Yep. So you got these goals, but then how do you attain those goals? Well, you got to attain those goals by having a plan and then write the plan and then start doing it and start working on it. And that usually gets me out of like, I'm bummed. Like I lost a, uh, a deal or something blew up in my face. And then I sit down, I'm like, okay, what's my plan? Where is Where am I going? And then when I write out my plan, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this many phone calls. I'm going to look at this many houses. I'm going to do this to do that. Depression just leaves me. Here's a, here's number nine. Here's my favorite. Anthony Robbins. I can't, can't, can't uh, claim this one at all, but you know, Anthony Robbins, you know, he, he talks about uh, changing your state snap your fingers right change your state you know my kids they go like they go off right they start crying throwing on the stuff on the ground and then you know you you tickle them or you change their state and they, they snap out of it right they didn't get the candy but you tease them or maybe you make them laugh and they forget all about it and then they they may go back into that state but the goal there is to snap them out of the state well here's this here's a move that i recommend doing okay you look up to the sky Put your hands up to the sky. Stand up. Put your hands up. Look up and start clapping your hands. You will change your whole physiology and your mind will follow it. It's incredible what you can do. So if you're really that bad, like you just bombed, like your mom just died. Like that that just happened to me. Like my mom just died. And how did I deal with that? And, you know, I had to keep my mind off of the worst thing, right? And so how did I not fall in a depression. I just kept on moving, move around, stand up, clap your hands, scream, do whatever you need to do. Do it in your closet, do it in the bathroom, do it, move around, clap your hands. Thank you, Anthony Robbins for giving me that one. Number 10. Okay. Another one. Self-esteem is big, man. If you have a strong self-esteem, I, I think, again, I'm not a psychologist, man. I made this, this crap up. So you can't hold me to any of this stuff, but this stuff works for me. And I hope that it works for you. You got to say this to you, okay? Close your eyes if you're driving. Try this. Say, I like myself. I love myself. I like myself. I love myself. Self-esteem is big, folks. I'm telling you, I got that from uh, Brian Tracy years ago. I, I can't remember. Achieving Greatness or some some audio course. And I'm just like, you know, and I speak this over my kids. I have my kids say, Kennedy, say, I like myself. I like myself. I go say it louder. I like myself. I like myself. I love myself. I love myself. You got to have self-esteem. I think if you have a strong self-esteem, you can easily snap out of these things that hold you down. All right. So that was a 10. There's the big 10. Now I got some bonuses. I just, more of them after when I closed up this podcast, more of them kept flowing to me. One of them is like, go to church. Yep. (laughs) That's that's bonus. Number one, I got three more. Go to church, man. A, a lot of folks, I don't know why you don't go to church, but I'm telling you, you're single. You should go to church. You might meet your wife or your husband. Go to church to someone in need at that church. You could help. You can learn. You know, I used to thought it was a waste of time years ago. You know, first of all, I wasn't involved in church until I was about 17 years old. Since I've been 17, now I'm 43, so 20-something years, man. I'm all up in the church now. And I notice every time I go to church, I feel good about myself. I feel good about what God's doing. God's working. God's, you know, the world is hopefully trying to get a better place. That's what's the confines of a church, man. And it uh, it could be any church. You can go to church online, go to life.church and check that out. Okay. But go to church, meet people, mingle with people, like-minded people, hang out with people, and that will help you. All right. Here's some things, some more bonuses. And and for some weird reason, man, a lot of these people, I don't know if they're depressed. I think they're depressed because they keep doing this. They, they live in the past. They keep beating themselves up and you know, things don't work and, and they, you know, and it doesn't work guys. When you, if you make a mistake, the past is in the past. You got to think of the future. I think future thinking is definitely will propel you forward and get you out of the Mick and Meyer. Stop living in the past and beating yourself up. It's okay to make mistakes. Hopefully, if this is your first time listening to the Savvy Radio Show, tune in to a couple of weeks ago when I talked about failing forward. I mean, I'm, I'm getting so much a great response from that episode. A lot of people went and bought the book and went and checked it out at the library. Man, it's just it's good stuff. Whatever, you got to figure out that this stuff works for me. What works for you? Figure out who you are, what you're about, what you're trying to do, and do it. 
Seek a friend, another bonus, seek a friend to hang out with. You know, it's interesting. There's certain types of friends of mine, like they, to me, they seem negative. It's just so funny. Like when we talk, I'm like positive Sally, right? And then um, dudes are negative, 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 negative on the phone. I'm like, dude, that dude's negative. Cut that dude off. Cut that, get him out. But when I'm around this dude and I'm start becoming negative, like, man, that chick blank me, ding, ding, bump, bump, you know, I'm bummed out. That dude all of a sudden's positive. <laughs> it's just so funny. But here, seek other friends to hang out with. That's what you need to do. Seek, seek somebody out like-minded. Find a mentor. Uh, there's other mentors out there that will encourage you. You know, every time someone texts me, Facebooks me in some form or fashion, even if you're something wrong with you, I'm going to leave you with a positive deal. Even if some dude the other day, one of my tenants in the property that still has my old phone number, he's actually a friend of mine, texts me. He's like, hey, there's ants in the building. You know, it's Sunday. This dude texts me on a Sunday. I mean, I, I, my first inclination was like, man, are we friends? Because I don't know why you'd be texting me on a Sunday talking about some ants at a commercial building. And I was like, what the? F-? I was like, come on now. And at first I was like, put some blast this dude. You know, at first I was like, ah, one more say, I'm going to be, I'm going to be witty with this mother. But you know what? I, I just thought about it. Like, Before I just slapped this dude, I'm just going to be like, watch out, man. They may get in your pants. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, seek a friend, be funny, change the tone and hang around the people that are going to lift you up, that are going to bring you to the next level. And here's my final bonus. Get out. Don't be isolated. Again, use all these little tips, but don't be hunkered down at the house, ordering pizza, watching TV. A, you won't get fat. B, you're going nowhere and you're losing money and you ain't buying assets. You are the number one asset. You, incorporated. Spend time and money on yourself. Get a Kindle and read a book. Get a course and master it. Go to the library. If you're really bummed, go to the bookstore, hang out there, just pick up a few books, roll them over to the table and go start flipping through them. You'll be motivated. That's what motivates me. When I travel, I get motivated. I see things. I think of how thankful I am, where I am and what I'm doing. All right. So that's it. That's the Savvy Radio Show. I try to do something real estate oriented. If this helps you, let your boy know. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets.